Wendy Bergen, welcoming you to New Media News. This is a program for and about the information world, especially computers and computer users. On this program, DHD Special Effects, Microsoft Technical Help, and the latest in CD-ROM. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. Roger and I are going to take a look at computer-generated animation on a CD. Roger, what did you bring today? Well, I brought in uh, two or three CD-ROM disks, including information on federal databases. And I'd like to just show you very quickly at the beginning of our little section today, Karen, how we can take computer-generated animation and play it back on CD-ROM disks. Okay. For example, this disk is produced by a company in England and it's called Danger Hot Stuff. It has on it a whole series of databases that were generated by computers, and I can scroll through it. This is a particularly good one. I can scroll through it basically by hitting the escape or the enter key and go to the individual segments. And there's some things on this disk that actually approach virtual reality. And how would you use that disk? Well, you could use it as a screensaver. You could use it basically if you wanted to uh, actually do an infomercial for a company to show them how they could uh, demonstrate their products. You could use this type of technology. A lot of it is used, however, in a screen-saving mode. Okay. The main theme of what I'd like to discuss today is basically government databases. One of the uh, biggest and largest user groups in the industry today for CD-ROM is a group called SIGCAT. SIGCAT is a group which was created about five and a half years ago by a, name, uh, a, a, a man named Jerry McFall. Jerry is an employee of the U.S. Geological Survey in Reston, Virginia. Jerry created and had the vision about five and a half years ago to create a user group that now has 6,500 members worldwide. Pretty big. CCAT means special interest groups on computer applications technology. It now has uh, approximately um, 13 subdivisions, and the subdivisions of SIGCAT include everything from standards in the industry today to portable optical disk systems. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry has also put together on this particular product a compendium, if you will, of all of the databases that have ever been produced by the federal government. Wow. Now, that at this time, there's approximately 350 CD-ROM disks that have been produced by the federal government. And on this particular disc, which was given away recently at a trade show called FOSSI, is the compendium and all these other things which I've, I've basically brought up a few minutes ago. Now, one of the uh, great advantages of this disc is it has on it the search and retrieval packages from the top 12 companies in the industry today. On all of these CD-ROM discs, and that's why sometimes these shows are a little bit complicated to do, you have to learn how to use a search and retrieval package for each disk. Whether it's a Macintosh disk, or it's a DOS disk, or a Windows disk, each program is different. This database uh, produced by Jerry McFall's group is, has all of these retrieval packages on it. And would you say that at 350 disks, the government is one of the bigger producers of compact disks right now? Yeah, and that, that number is actually growing geometrically because um, of the 350 products, some of them have like 20 and 30 CD-ROM disks in that, hmm. uh, you know, that, that grouping. A lot of the satellite imagery coming in from our satellites that are retrieving massive amounts of data are no longer being stored on magnetic tapes because after about 10 years, the signal on the magnetic tape deteriorates. Uh -huh. So NASA and Jet Propulsion Laboratory and some brilliant people that work for these groups are now migrating very quickly, in fact, into CD-ROM technology because the databases basically last forever, you know, or virtually forever. Uh, also, it's a digital process instead of an analog process so that the clarity of the information, say, from a satellite signal mm -hmm. 10 years from now will be as clear as when it was recorded today. That's great. Indeed. You know, uh, one of the biggest questions asked in the industry today is, should I buy an internal or an external CD-ROM drive? And, you know, there's really only one way to answer that question, and it's if you have a Macintosh or an IBM-based computer, and you have what is equivalent to a half-height slot, 
it is definitely advisable to buy an internal CD-ROM drive today. Now, why is that? Well, it saves you about $100. Okay. And as you see, I've brought in an external case, and this would be compatible either with an IBM or a Macintosh computer. But the CD-ROM drive inside it is identical. In other words, it's really what you're paying for is the power supply case. So if you know how to use a screwdriver, you know how to open up a computer case, you certainly have to make sure that the power is off. It's more advisable to buy an internal CD-ROM drive today and save that hundred dollars. Well, I know even on a Macintosh, it's preferable to have an internal drive because you're not using up all the, the yes. SCSI devices. Finally, the Macintosh world has caught up with the <laughs> DOS world. Yes, and I think that's about all the time we have today, Karen. But I sure look forward to showing you what I've brought in for next week. Thanks, Roger. Okay. See you then. Bye-bye. And now New, New Media News goes to a break. Some advice Forbes magazine suggests when buying a CD player for a DOS, IBM style machine. The magazine lists four features to look at. MPC level 2, which means it plays disc formatted to the standard multimedia PC. It will then handle video images. The second feature is Kodak Photo CD compatibility. If you decide to display photos from your PC, this feature will allow additional photos at a different session. Third is the ISO 9660 feature. This capability doesn't add much to the cost, but it means it's formatted to the international standards. And finally, XA, or extended architecture. With this, you can later add on to computers from other developers. 
Major corporations have gotten together and created the Smart Card Forum. This cross-industry effort will promote uses for the Smart Card. Some uses will include payment, transit, health care, and identification. The companies involved are MasterCard, Citicorp, American Express, Visa, IBM, AT&T, Microsoft, and Apple. Well, that's new media news for now. I'm Wendy Bergen, inviting you to join us again for news for and about the information world.